Hi, welcome once again to another new video. This is Santu Sahu and you are watching Sahu's tutorial. And in this YouTube video, I will be covering an important American novelist called Jack London. And you know that Jack London was one of the prominent figure, one of the prolific writer in the field of American literature. And he has especially written novels. Apart from novels, he has also written short stories and some non-fictional writing. And in this YouTube video, we will be covering his major works. We will also discuss some important characters from his novels. We will also learn the summary of some important novels and short stories. So, without delaying, let's get into the video. And this is my humble request to all of you. Please do subscribe the channel and tap the bell icon to get more notification that I will upload in future. So here is the first slide. Let's get into the video. So Jack London was born in the year 1876 and died in 1916. I told that he was one of the prominent figures in the field of American literature. He was prominently he has prominently written novels and he has also written some short stories and some non-fictional works. So an American novelist, journalist, and activist. And he was a pioneer of commercial fiction and American magazines. He was one of the first American authors to become an international celebrity. And he started to earn a large fortune from writing. So what happened? He was one of the earliest writer to earn a large fortune from writing. And he was a pioneer of commercial fiction. Now, he was also an innovator in the genre that would rather become known as science fiction. So here she was an innovator. He was an innovator of the genre that called science fiction that will become later known as science fiction. And Jack London was a part of the radical literary group called The Crowd. And he was a part of a, lad, uh, of a radical literary group called The Crowd that was in San Francisco. Sorry. and a passionate advocate of animal rights, workers' rights, and socialism. So he was also a worker. He, he had worked for the uh, worker rights, and so uh, and he was also a socialist, and he was an advocate of animal rights. And his famous novels are, the first one is The Iron Hill, and the second one is The People of the Abyss, and the third one is The Call of the Wild, fourth one is that is White Fang. These are famous uh, novels written by Jack London. Let's get into the first novel here. That was Iron Hill. The Iron Hill and this novel was published in the year 1908. Which an Iron Hill is a political novel in the form of science fiction. So it's a political novel in the form of science fiction. And it describes the fall of the United States to the cruel fascist dictatorship of the Iron Hill a group of monopoly capitalists. So, what is Iron Hill? Iron Hill is a, a group of uh, monopoly capitalists. The main premises of the book is the rise of a socialist mass movement in the United States, strong enough to have a real chance of winning, uh, of winning national elections, getting to power and implementing a radical socialist regime. So the main premise of the book is the rise of the socialist mass movement in, 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 in the United States, which is strong enough to have a real chance of winning national elections and getting power and implementing radical uh, socialist regime. And this book is considered to be the earliest of the modern dystopian fiction in the forms of social science fiction as employed by novels such as We, Brave New World, and A Canticle for Lebowitz. It chronicles the rise of oligarchic tyranny in the United States. So novels like We Brave New World and A Canticle for Lebowitz, these were all dystopian novels. They had paved the way and this had influenced also the Iron Hill. And the Iron Hill is chronicling the rise of an oligarchic tyranny in the United States. The Iron Hill begins with a foreword. It begins with a foreword later written by 27th century. So in the in the futuristic setting, the, there is 27th century scholar named Anthony Meredith. That's why it's a dystopian novel and who has been researching the document that makes up the novel. He has named it the Everhart Manuscript and its central character, socialist activist 
and eventual revolutionary is earnest ever heard. So the Iron Hills begins with a foreword written by the 20th, 27th century scholar Anthony Meredith who has been researching the document that makes up the novel. So, and this is also a frame narrative, a frame story, that a story within a story. Now he has named that manuscript, manus, manuscript as uh, Everhart manuscript in the name of Ernest Everhart, the central character who was a socialist activist and an eventual revolutionary. So here, who is the scholar? Anthony Meredith is the scholar. And the name of the manuscript is Everhard Manuscript. And the central character, socialist activist, and the revolutionary was Ernest Everhard. And the document was written by Everhard's wife, Avis, because Avis uh, had interest, interest in her husband. And she knows everything about her husband. That's why the document was written by Everhard's wife, Avis. Avis has written the document. Okay. Well, it's told via the framing device. I told earlier that framing device means frame uh, that is a, a story within a story. It's told via the framing device and it of a manuscript found centuries after the action takes place of a footnotes by a scholar Anthony Meredith, circa 2600 AD or 419 BOM, that is the Brotherhood of Man. And the story here covers the years of 1912 through 1932, in which the oligarchy, that is the Iron Hill, arises in the United States. Japan is here conquered. Japan has conquered East Asia and creates its own empire, whereas India gains independence and Europe becomes socialist. And Canada, Mexico and Cuba from, other, from, from, uh, from their own oligarchies and are aligned with the USA. London remains silent as to events transpiring in the rest of the world. And, and this Iron Hill by Jack London has inspired George Orwell to write his famous dystopian uh, the novel that is it is 1984. 1984. The Iron Hill is cited by George Orwell's biographer Michael Selden as having influenced Orwell's most famous novel 1984. So this work has influenced George Orwell's uh, most famous novel 1984. Who is claiming here? Michael Selden, the biographer of George Orwell, is claiming. Another famous work is The People of the Abyss. The People of the Abyss that was published in the year 1903 is a book by Jack London containing first-hand account of several weeks spent living in Whitechapel, district of the East End of London, uh, 8902. So, The People of the Abyss is 1903, a book by Jack London containing first-hand account of several weeks spent living in Whitechapel, district of East End of London. And London, that is Jack London, has attempted to understand the working class of this deprived area of city sleeping in workhouse or on the streets and staying as a lodger with a poor family. So this was the real experience experienced by London that is uh, and these experiences were uh, they had, this, they, these experiences have helped him to write the uh, the paper of the abyss that was published in the year 1903. Another one is the call of the wild a short adventure novel this famous novel written by Jack London that is the call of the Wild, and it is published in the year 1903, stayed in Yukon, Canada during the 1890s Kondike Gold Rush, when strong, uh, when strong slate dogs were in high demand. And the central character is the name, name of the dog, that is called Buck. Buck is the name of the dog, which is central character of the novel, The Call of the Wild. So, Wild is here Buck. The story opens in 1897 with Buck, of who is a powerful 140 pound St. Bernard Scottish Shepherd Mix and happily living in California's Santa Clara Valley as the pampered paid of Judge Miller. And now it is, it is the pampered paid of the Judge Miller and his family. And is the novel's protagonist, 140 pound St. Bernard Scottish School Mix who lived contently or uh, with happily in California with Judge Miller. However, he was stolen and sold to the uh, Kondike by the gardener's assistant Malvin and was forced to work as a sledge jog in the Hearts Yukon and he eventually finds a loving master named John Thornton. So the master who was loving was John Thornton and gradually grows feral as he adapts to the wilderness eventually joining our Woolbrook pack. After Thornton's death, he is free of humans forever and becomes a legend in the Kondike. And here is another, that is the Speech with the antagonist, who is the arch rival of Bach, the novel's initial antagonist is Bach, uh, arch rival, a white-haired husky from Spitsbergen, who 
who had accompanied a geo geological survey into the Canadian Barrens. He had a long career as a sledge, uh, sledge dock leader and siege bark at uncharacteristic ability for a south land rock to adapt and thrive in north as a threat to his dominance. He repeatedly provokes fights with Ba, but who, who, who bides his time? Who bides his time? Okay. Another famous, this is the, one of the famous novels written by Jack Nordell, there is a White Fang. White Fang is the famous novel written by uh, Jack London, 1906. It is a companion novel of the Call of the Wild. It's a companion novel and thematic mirror to London's best known work, that is the Call of the Wild which is about a kidnapped domesticated dog embracing his wild ancestry to survive and thrive in the world. And you know, White Fang, the novel's protagonist, is a wolf dog who has uh, who was born wild but becomes a more dog-like after Grey Beaver. So Grey Beaver is a, here is a human being who, who has domesticated uh, the White Fang, domesticates him. He becomes a more, do more dog-like after Grey Beaver, domesticated him. And he gets bullied by Libli, another, another dog was forced to become a fighting dog when he was bought by Beauty Smith. So, another human being is here, Beauty Smith. However, his life changed when a loving master named Wyden Scott. So, here Beauty Smith was very uh, cruel. Grey Beaver was neither, neither cruel nor kind, whereas Wyden Scott was a very uh, loving master. So, there are three masters. One is Grey Beaver, another is Beauty Smith and Wyden Scott. So, Grey Beaver uh, had domesticated neither cruel nor nor kind and beauty smith was very cruel whereas Wayden scott was a loving master buys him and takes him to his home in santa so here the at last the loving master named Wayden scott buys him and takes him to his home in santa clara valley valley in california and he eventually becomes a part of the family after saving jack scott from jim hall and is that the white Hank's mother a sledge rock formerly owned by Grey Beaver's now dead brother, known at the beginning of the novel as the Sea Wolf, possibly named for the, that is the Alcoinkin deity Gitch Manitou. And Lib Lib is a canine pup who also lives in the Native American village and bullies White Fang until White Fang kills him at night. So here are major human characters like Grey Beaver, Beauty Smith. So here, and another one is the, that is the Weedon Scott. So Grey Beaver is a Native American chief which White Fang's first master, so the first Fang master was Grey Beaver, whereas he is, uh, and Grey Beaver, he is a, uh, a neutral master, neither as cruel as Beauty Smith, nor as kind as Whedon Scott. So Whedon was very kind, very loving. And Beauty Smith, the main antagonist of the novel, and White Fang's second master, and who was a dog fighter, who was very cruel, Beauty Smith. Before Adam is another novel, so another novel written by Jack London is a before Adam. It's a novel by Jack London. It was serialized in 1906-1907 in Everybody in Everybody's Magazine, and it is the story of a man who dreams. He lives the life of an early hominid. So it is the story of a man who is dreaming and he is thinking that he lives the life of an early hominid. The story is offering an early view of human evolution, and the majority of the story is told through the eyes of man's hominid alter ego and one of the cave people. And in addition to the cave people, there are the more advanced fire people, the more animal-like tree people. So the fire people, the more animal-like tree people also there. Other characters include the hominid's father, a love interest and a red eye, a fierce atavism that perpetually terrorizes the cave people. And a suburb cat also plays a role in the story that is V for Adam, a novel written by Jack London. Now, there is a short story called to build a fire. This is a famous short story. I is told that apart from, apart from novels, Jack London has also written some beautiful uh, stories. So let's uh, unearth the stories here. To build a fire is a short story by American author Jack London. There are two versions of this story. Two versions. Two versions. The first version was published in 1902, whereas the second version was published in 1908. And the second version that was published in the year 1908, and this version became very popular. So the 1908 version is about an unnamed male protagonist and who, he, who is ventures or who journeys out in the sub-zero of Boreal forest of the Yukon territory. So the second version was, became very popular, it became a classic uh, classic uh, work of American literature and he he is followed by a native dog that is the, the hero of that uh, 
um, the central protagonist of that story that is he is followed by a native dog and is an en route to visit his friends ignoring warnings from an older man from sulfur creek about the dangers of hiking alone in extreme cold so what happened he actually underestimates the warnings of old man and he goes and the protagonist here look at here they underestimates the harsh conditions and he freezes to death after his fire is doused and he is unable to relight it so to build a fire is an oft cited example of naturalist movement and that has portrayed the conflict of man versus nature so here the theme of man versus nature can be found in the story to build a fire it also reflects london's personal experience in the yukon territory okay other short stories are an odyssey of the north love of life so these two these two stories also uh, were written by uh, jack london that is an odyssey of the north and love of life he had also written about the south pacific in stories about the south pacific sea in stories such as the pearls of parley or the heathen and heathen was one of the famous short story written by jack london the heathen so heathen that deals with south pacific uh, south pacific seas here so here the heathen is one of the familiar one of the most famous uh, short story written by jack london let's learn the let's to uh, let's learn the story here of the heathen it's a very interesting story please do uh, learn it here in the story the two people from different culture and racial backgrounds are the only survivors of a ship that can encounter a hurricane in a pacific and the remain together so what happened so there was a there was a there was a boat and that boat faced hurricane in the pacific ocean and the two people from different culture and racial backgrounds they were the only survivors the background was that 1907 london began a voyage across the pacific ocean in its cage the snack and he visited islands in the south pacific concluding the voyage in sydney australia and he wrote about the adventures in his book the cruise of the snack so he wrote about the adventure in his book the cruise of the snack the hidden is set among island that london visited during that period in that the hidden the narrator is a pearl buyer named charlie so name of the narrator is charlie charlie who is a pearl buyer he is a cabin passenger on a schooner and the petty jim sailing from rangirua to tahiti with a kanka crew at the end of the pearling season in the pometos in the pometas so the narrator is a pearl buyer named charlie is a cabin passenger on sunar the pet the petit jin the name of the sunar here vessel is here uh, petite jin sailing from rangura uh, to tahiti with a kanka crew and name of the kanka crew is otu at the end of the pearling season in the pometas the boat having 85 sorry i told earlier that it is 58 it was 85 yeah 85 uh, the, uh, the boat having 85 deck passenger is overloaded and several passengers die of smallpox charlie and the other cabin passengers drink whiskey so charlie and other cabin passengers they were drinking whiskey until it runs out and they were believing that the belief that it will kill the smallpox germs that's why they were uh, they were drinking whiskey and the boat is in the tired path of hurricane so what happened so the boat was destroyed the boat Where the boat was destroyed uh, by the hurricane here, and the, the name of the vessel here is that Petite Jin is destroyed in the hurricane, and Charlie survives by clinging to a hatch cover from the boat, sharing it with a kanka named Otto. So the only two survivor of that boat was uh, Petite Jin and Otto. Otto and Petite Jin. Uh, Otto, sorry, uh, Otto and the narrator that is Charlie. Eventually, Charlie loses consciousness and comes to on the beach of a beach of an atoll and otto has saved his life by pulling him from the water they are the only cyber survivors from the petite jin so the name of the vessel is petite jin okay and the next sense name in south seas such as a ceremony binds two men closer together than blood rather see so the, the famous line here in the south sea such as a ceremony binds two men closer together than blood rather see and they part in papage and otto goes home to bora bora but he returns because his wife had died and he accompanies charlie for the next 17 years and ensuring that he does not come to harm he will not harm any and the line say that is he uh, charlie said that truly he made me a better man 
yet he was not a straight laced and he knew nothing of common christian morality he was a heathen a gross materialist who believed that when he died he was died he was dead and he believed merely in fair play and square dealing otto had my welfare always at heart and he thought aid for me wait my plans and to and took a greater interest in them in them than i did myself and otto here advises charlie to become a captain of a schooner in order to save enough to own a plantation and he does so he marries and has children and otto helps to helps to bring up the children on the plantation the relationship ends when otto is killed while he was trying to save charlie from sharks on the coast of sabu so here when otto has uh, otto was uh, saving the life of charlie from the attack of sharks on the coast of sabu otto is killed by the shark otto and here the here the famous line comes that and so passed otto who saved me and made me man and who saved me in the end this is of the story end that and otto at last eventually was killed and another non fictional work this is a non fictional work this is a non fictional work written by non fictional work written by jack london is a uh, non fictional illustrated book by jack london chronicling his sailing adventure in 1907 across the south pacific and his catch the snack and so accompanying london on the voyage was his wife charmian london and a small crew and the snack in the title was named after lewis carroll lewis carroll's 1876, 1876 poem the hunting of the snack the hunting of the snack so the snack the title the, the the word the the word from the title the snack has been taken from lewis carroll's 1876 poem the hunting of the snack and london jack london taught himself sail navigation and the basics of sailing of and of boats and a boats during the course of this of this adventure and describes these details to the reader he visits exotic locations including the solomon islands hawaii and his first person accounts and the photographs provide insight into these remote places at the beginning of the 20th century so this is all about jack london thank you once again for watching the video and if you want me to make video on any particular topic you can write me down you can suggest me in the comment box i will definitely try to make video on this topic stop thank you